Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for just giving us safe travels, Lord. We just thank you for being in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Bless you all for coming out tonight. Hallelujah. I know you wanted to stay in the rain coming, and it's just dark. It's one of them nights we just want to be cozy and lay in the bed. But I just bless God for you coming out to here with us, say the Lord. Amen. Bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to get hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give honor to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you all the praise and honor that's due your name. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. I want to give honor to my bishop. Hallelujah. My bishop, bless you, bishop. I honor you. I thank you. I give honor to my first lady, who we would truly, I love, she will ever be in my heart, so I would truly love her forever, truly miss. Honor to my husband, bless you, Elder Russell Slade, bless you, bless you, love you. Honor to my son, RJ, amen, bless you, hallelujah. Um, bless all the officials that came out and pressed your way, bless you, and to the whole household of faith, amen. While you stand to your feet, my title is called Speak Life to Your Dead Situation. Dry bones. Turn your Bible to Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10. Ask your neighbor what's dead in your life. So I'm going to read 1 through 4. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I commanded, and I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Tell your neighbor there's a shaking coming in your situation. Father God, I just thank you for today, Father God. I ask you, Father God, let this word come forth, Father God. Hide me behind your cross, Father God. May I decrease and you increase, Father God. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer, you may have a seat. Amen. There's a shaking coming into your situation. Those dry bones. God sets the prophet Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones, which represent the house of Israel. For one purpose, to prophesy life. Ezekiel obeys the voice of God and speaks life to the valley of full of dead bones. There was so much power and authority in his voice that everything dead in the valley came back to life. My God. God has given you power and authority to speak life to your dead situation. God instructed Ezekiel to prophesy to the dead dry bones, saying, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Meaning he spoke the inspired word of the Lord, and these bones came together. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you know, Hebrews 11, 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, we walk by faith and not by sight. So it's not what we see. We got to have faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. When you hear the word of the Lord, that's when your faith needs to be activated. Amen. Just as Ezekiel prophesies life to a valley of dry bones, I want to encourage you this evening and speak life to every dead situation in your life. That which is dead shall live again. I speak life to your prayer life. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Your worship, you hear ye the word of the Lord. Your relationship with God, hear ye the word of the Lord. Your praise, hear ye the word of the Lord. Your health, your family, your children, hear ye the word of the Lord. Your faith to come alive and hear ye the word of the Lord. Dear relationships, hear ye the word of the Lord. Dear marriages, hear ye the word of the Lord. 
Dear relationships, hear ye the word of the Lord. Dear dreams, hear ye the word of the Lord. Dear visions, hear ye the word of the Lord. Dear finances, hear ye the word of the Lord. Live, live, live. Dear churches, hear ye the word of the Lord. Dear ministries, hear ye the word of the Lord. Dear businesses, hear ye the word of the Lord. Dear prophetic words, hear ye the word of the Lord. Everything in your life that has illegally been crucified or dead or died a premature death will live again. I speak life. I speak life into the place of death, light in the place of darkness, joy in the place of sorrow, abundance in the place of lack, health in the place of sickness, rain in the place of drought. That which is dead will live again. Hallelujah. I speak life to every dead situation, everything that's keeping you bound with no joy and no peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Has it really been dead too long? You might be thinking, sister, there's no way that thing in my life, that situation, that dead could ever live again. It's been dead so long. In fact, it has been dead so long, all hope is gone. Maybe there's something in your life that has been dead a long time. Maybe you have given up all hope and there is every ever being a resurrection. But God's word to you is there is nothing so dead that God cannot bring back. There's nothing God cannot do. There's nothing too hard for God. Genesis 18 and 14 says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? The valley of dry bones. In Ezekiel chapter 37, the bones in the valley had been there for many years. In fact, the house of Israel had been dead for hundreds of years. They were not just dead. They were very dead. They were not just dry. They were very dry. In verse 2, it says in 37, chapter 37, verse 2, And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. These bones were so dead, so dry, that when God asked Ezekiel if they could live again, Ezekiel responded by saying he could not answer that. He said, God, you're the only one that would know the answer to that question. Come on now. Verse 3, and he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh, God, oh, Lord God, you know. But even though they had been dead for hundreds of years, And were not just dry, but very dry. When Ezekiel began to prophesy and speak life, something happened. Things began to change. Tell your neighbor, your situation is about to change. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. A miracle took place. There was a noise, a shaking. Bones came together, and when Ezekiel finished prophesying, A valley of dry bones came back to life and became an exceeding great army. Verse 10, so I prophesied and he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Even though those bones were very dry and they had been dead for hundreds of years, whenever Ezekiel began to prophesy, it released life and a valley of dry bones turned into a valley of life. Hallelujah, that's something to shout about. Tell your neighbor there's nothing so dead that God cannot bring back to life. Regardless of how dead that thing in your life is, maybe you've given up or hope or ever experience a resurrection. But I prophesy change is coming. I speak life. Hallelujah. Let's talk about some folks in the Bible who had some dead, dry situations. Abraham and Sir. Abraham being weak in the faith, he considered his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb in Romans 4.19. Genesis 17. Abraham and Sir both were old. In fact, Abraham was 100 and Sir, his wife, was 90. The Bible says that Abraham was the same as dead as Sarah's womb was dead. In the natural, there was no way that Sarah could ever conceive and birth a son. She was past the age of childbearing. Luke 18, 27 says, The things which are possible and possible with men are possible with God. 
God brought life back to Abraham in his old age and caused Sarah's dead womb to have life again. As a result, Isaac was born despite of their old age, just like God has promised. The name Isaac means laughter. Isaac, the son of their old age, truly brought them joy and made them laugh. But before that joy came, before they experienced laughter, the things they thought were dead in their lives had to live again. Hallelujah. What's in your life that needs to come back to life? What is it that when it comes back to life will produce joy and laughter in your life? Whatever it is, I prophesize it shall live again. Hallelujah. Let's look at Lazarus, John 11. Lazarus had been dead for four days. The human body begins to decay after three days, which means Lazarus' body was already experiencing corruption or decay. By the time Jesus arrived at Bethany to the house of Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, the funeral had already taken place. The body of Lazarus was already in the grave. Martha said, Jesus, if you would have been here by now, my brother wouldn't have been dead. Jesus immediately informed her that her brother will live again. Notice that Jesus did not agree with her. Instead, he began to speak life, not what was, not what he saw. He said, your brother shall live again. Jesus asked to be taken to Lazarus' tomb. Once he arrived, he told them, take the stone away. He informed him why they should not do what he asked them. They said, Master, he has been dead four days, and by now he's stinking. Tell your neighbor, the stink won't stop God. God is not afraid of that stink in our life. Let me break it down so you understand. God is not afraid of sin, sickness, or bondage. He is not afraid of the mess in our life. He will turn our mess into a miracle. He will turn our setbacks into a comeback. He will not only do it in our lives, but he also do it in the lives of those we love, regardless of the mess or stink that's in their lives. He will make a miracle out of their mess. Jesus walked up to the tomb and spoke three words that changed everything. Lazarus, come forth. There was so much power in his voice that even though Lazarus had been dead for four days, it brought life to his dead body, a body that had already begun to decay. It didn't matter how many days he had been dead. It didn't matter that the body had already begun to decay. At the command of Jesus, life took the place of death. Jesus walked out of the grave. Lazarus walked out of the grave bound with grave clothes on, and Jesus said, loose him and let him go. John eleven forty four, and he that was dead come forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound and with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. He prophesied life and what happened. Death had to flee. Once again, we found where life drove back death, what Jesus prophesied to that which was dead. Let's look at Elisha, raises the Shunammite son. Second Kings 4. A wealthy woman had a room built on her house and furnished it for Prophet Elisha. When Elisha went through the area of Shunammon, he would stay in this special room. Elisha prophesied to her one day and told her that although her husband was old, she was going to have a son within a year. Just as Elisha prophesied, she gave birth to a son at the time Elisha had prophesied. This is in 2 Kings 4, 16-17. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, don't lie to your handmaid. How many times you told God, no, God, don't lie to me. And the woman conceived and bore a son at the season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. A few years later, the boy fell ill while working in the fields with his father, and he died. The women knew where to go. She knew who to go to. She knew who prophesied to her son's birth and who could raise him back from the dead. She immediately went to find the prophet Elisha. She informed Elisha that she did not ask for a son, but was given one. Now he was dead. Elisha instructed his servant, Gehazi, to go to the child and put a staff on the boy's face. The servant obeyed, but nothing happened. When Elisha arrived, he went to where the dead child was. He shut the door, prayed, and stretched himself on the boy's body, and God restored the boy back to life. My God. This woman's faith caused her dead child to come back to life. If you can't believe like a Shunammite woman, 
that things did in your life can also come back to life. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No matter what the devil may be telling you, the devil is a liar. He may be saying things such as, you're too old. You have missed your opportunity. You waited too long. You don't have the education you need. You're not connected to the right people. You're not good enough. You're never going to get your healing. Your children will continue to backslide. You're never going to get off drugs and alcohol. Your loved one won't get saved. You're not spiritual enough. No one wants you. You will never marry again. Your marriage is over. You should curse God and die. You're not going to live but die. You look the devil in his face and tell the devil he is a liar and the father of lies. Amen? I speak life. What God promised you, he is able to perform. Amen? Hallelujah. Romans 4.21 says, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he is able to also perform. Tell your neighbor your best is yet to come. Your current situation in your life does not have to stay the way it is. Things can change in a day. Things can change in a moment. Proverbs 27 verse 1 says, Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. It's not over until God says it's over, saints. And God says it's not over, it's just the beginning. Everything is about to change. Your tears are going to be turned into joy. Your weeping into laughter. New life is coming to an area of your life that is dead. I prophesy and speak life. Your best is yet to come. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says, Remember, ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Psalms 126, 1 through 3 says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said thou among the heathen, The Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us. Wherefore, we are glad. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you shall live and not die. Psalms 118.17 says, you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Despite David's enemies continue to try to kill him, David made a powerful declaration. He said, I shall live but not die. Just like David's enemies tried to kill him, you too may have some enemies trying to kill you. It may be a person, a sickness, or a spirit. The good news is that they have not succeeded. You are still alive. Their plans did not succeed yesterday. They will not succeed today, and they will not succeed tomorrow. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Tell your neighbor, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. God told Hezekiah to cancel the funeral. Isaiah 38. Hezekiah was sick unto death. When the prophet Isaiah walked into his room, I'm sure Hezekiah hoped to hear a good word from the prophet. Instead, the prophet said, set your house in order. You shall not live, but you shall die. Isaiah 38, 1 says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amaz, came unto him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Hezekiah did not give up so easily. He did not want to die. He wanted to live. So what did he do? He turned his face to the wall and he prayed. Amen? And God heard his prayers. God sent the same prophet into the same room with the same man in the same bed, but the prophet had a new message for him. He said, God has heard your prayers. You shall not die but live, for God added 15 years to his life. My God, tell your neighbor God has heard your prayers and seen your tears, and he's coming to see about you. In verse 5, 
Go and say to Hezekiah, thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thee 15 years. Hezekiah's funeral was canceled. The healing virtue flowed through his body and brought new life. That new life caused death to flee and added years to his life. Hallelujah. I speak life. If God killed it, let it remain dead. I must say, if things that are dead in our life are things that God killed or let die, let it stay dead. If it's a relationship that was going nowhere, a relationship that will only bring you pain, hurt, and tears, do not try to resurrect it. Let it remain dead so God can bring a better relationship in your life. If it's a business that served its day, let it stay dead so God can let another business be birthed within you. One that will serve this generation and will bring more blessings to you than the last one. If it's a ministry that has served its purpose, let it stay dead. Do not try to resurrect it so God can begin a fresh new ministry in you, one that will be relevant to today's generation. If it's a door that God has closed, let it stay closed. Don't try to reopen it. Why? Because God is about to open a bigger and better door for you. If the dead things are things God killed or let die, let them stay dead. Don't try to keep the things in your life that God has removed no matter what they are. Let those things die in your life, your ministry, your family, your relationship, your finances, and your business. Let them die so something new can be resurrected. It's time for your new life. Why let things that God killed or let die stay dead? Because God has something better for you. Tell your neighbor, get ready. God has something better for you. The things that have been illegally crucified or died a premature death is a different story. If it's something that has not served its purpose, if it's something God is not through with, refuse to accept it, decree you shall live again, prophesy it, speak to it, and talk to it. Death and life are in the power of our tongues, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And that's in Proverbs 18, 21. I speak life to every dead situation in your life. I speak life to every dry bone. I speak of lessons of help, lessons of peace. I speak life you're going to live. Oh, my brother, my sister, I speak life. You are the head and not the tail. You are the lender and not the borrow. You are above and not belief. You will prevail. I speak life. Don't give up the fight for your life. You shall live and not die. The power of life and death is in your tongue. You are more than a conqueror. You are blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I speak prosperity. I speak favor. I speak good health. I speak peace and joy over your life. I speak more anointing and power, life to your spirit, life to your soul. May God bless your spirit by his whole word in Jesus' name. In closing, here are some of the ways God has shown his power and faithfulness to us. We must trust that he's making ways for our life today. Hear the word of the Lord to strengthen your faith. If he told the sun when to rise, and it did, he will again, Hosea 6 and 3. If he told the storm to be still, and it did, he will again in Mark 4, 35 through 41. If he told the sea where to split, and it did, it will again in Exodus 14, 21 through 29. If he told the walls when to fall, and they did, he will again in Joshua 6. If he told the chains when to break, and they did, he will again in Acts 16, 25 through 26. If he told the stones to roll away, and it did, he will again in John 11, 38 through 44. If he told the grave, let him go, and it did, he will again in Luke 24. If he told the bones to come alive, and they did, he will again in Ezekiel 37. God bless you. There's power in your tongue. Speak life, not death. Stand to your feet, let's pray and touch and agree and speak life to every dead situation in your life. God said we can declare and decree a thing and speak it into existence. Let's speak life and decree and declare a thing. Amen. When I call out this, you say, I speak life. Dead finances. 
You are the head and not the tail. You are blessing the city and the fields. Dead marriages. What God has joined together, let no one separate. Your health. You are by your stripes, you are healed. Amen. You shall live and not die. Dead ministries. God said, upon this rock, he should build his church and the gates of hell should not prevail. Your praise. This is the day the Lord has made. You shall rejoice and be glad in it. Your prayer life. You are to pray and never give up. Deliverance. Know that if the sun sets free, you are free indeed. Your faith. All you need is to have faith as small as a mustard seed. You tell that mountain to move and it shall move. Your dear dreams. God has a plan for your life and it is good and not evil and it shall come at expected end. Your dead visions. Write the vision down and make it plain. Your guilt and shame. Know that there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Your peace. God will give you peace that surpasses all your understanding. Your joy. Know the joy of the Lord is your strength. Your worship. God said we are to worship him in spirit and truth. Dead churches. On the day of Pentecost, they was on one accord. One accord and a rushing wind and the Holy Ghost fell down on everyone and they spoke in tongues. If you don't want a dead church, we need to come on one accord, one accord, one accord, one accord, and the Holy Ghost will fall down. I speak life. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We speak life, Father God. Lord, we thank you for your word. Father God, I pray that we hear ye the word of the Lord. Life and death is in the power of our tongue. We shall live and not die. We speak life to every situation, every dead situation in our life, Father God. We speak life. We would not speak death. We speak life right now in the name of Jesus. You said that we declare the decree of thing, it is so. And we declare and decree right now that we shall live and not die. Our marriages will live. Our finances shall live. Our ministry shall live. Father God, everything did in our life shall live. Hallelujah. We give you joy and honor, Father God. We give you glory. We speak life to every dead situation in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.